In September of 2012, a group of Ryerson students, including myself, were assigned the task of exploring Toronto's Earl's Court neighborhood and the stretch of St. Clair Road that runs through it, called Corso Italia. Our initial encounter with the neighborhood revealed a street lined on both sides by a vibrant collection of cafes, clothing stores, and restaurants. Soon after, we took a trip to the city archives to try and get a better sense of the history of the neighborhood, but discovered there was not much to be found. The strip as it appears now was forged in the 1960s by a wave of Italian immigrants, but the archives are predominantly concerned with the 1900s and earlier. Talking with the citizens of Corso Italia revealed to us that the ensuing years have seen even more change, with influxes of Portuguese and Latin American communities, as well as generally younger families, further transforming the rich tapestry that makes up the neighborhood. Our search for a more active, living archive of the region eventually took a detour into a bakery named Tre Mari. Admittedly, this had a lot to do with the fact that there was a delicious smell wafting out of the storefront. But Tre Mari, it turns out, is very special, having endured amidst all this change as one of only a handful of family-owned businesses that are still standing after 50 plus years. I'm very proud to say it's been here for 52 years. Okay. And I'm very proud to say that it's the third generation making the bread and working here and it's, it's a good thing. Who we are is not a big flashy bakery that's really modern. We're just old school, old fashioned, good quality. We just want you to come in to relax, have a laugh with you, sit with you. See the same faces day in and day out is wonderful. There's always a story. We discovered that Chemari is not only a bakery, but also a cafe, a catering company, and a department store. We found a floor space perpetually filled with customers coming and going. Young couples who have arrived for espressos, grandmothers buying ingredients for dinner at home, commuters just stopping by to grab some freshly baked bread. Its walls are lined with black and white photographs, offering generous access to its past. We soon learned that Tremari has been guided by the DeLeo family, starting with founder Vincent DeLeo, who have worked hard to keep it at the cornerstone of the community. I started working here when I was around 13 years old. Because we were at such a young age, it just felt so natural. Now it's just embedded. We are today who we were from the very beginning when my mother and father-in-law started it. They were hands-on, one-to-one with the customers. And I see that with my sons. The bakery just kind of connects everyone. It doesn't matter where you come from, doesn't matter your background. It's like, food is like a language for people. And that's really beautiful for us to see that. Inspired by the work of theorist John Hartley, who suggests researchers broaden their considerations for what an archive can be, we began to consider Chemari and the DeLeo family as resource locations. The photos on their walls and the anecdotes the family themselves happily offer up are part of a long-time tradition of curating their own history and connecting with the neighborhood around them. But as times and demographics changed, the DeLeo family began to consider new ways to achieve meaningful connections with their clientele. In the last three years, we see another change. There's definitely been a change in, in, in the types of people that uh, have moved into the, into the area. See, our clientele that's sort of younger and hipper and cooler, like, that's, for, that's what we need to access. I remember my mom saying, okay guys, like, it's really time for us to start uh, evolving and it's time for us to start, you know, doing things a little differently now. And then we started and we started um, with just the bare bones, just breaking it down and, and figuring out what was the most important thing we wanted to say. And then, and then we divided the website. We, we kind of said, okay, well, what is the website going to tell people? It's going to tell people about our products, our specials, our history. Because our, our history was the most important thing. Because that's always something that really captivates people. And it warms your heart. Different generations are really tagging on to social media. It's really a way to interact with, with your customers, gain feedback, let them know what you're doing, hear about what they're doing, and you have to keep on that ongoing communication. By doing that, I mean it's it's even better than pumping out ads because they're not just seeing your name, they're not just seeing what, what you have, they're getting to know you. For example, when we, if we were to tweet something, I, I mean, I think it's smarter to tweet something like, I just took out 10 hot steamy pies from the oven instead of like, steam, hot steamy pies from the oven, 1095 today only. It's like, who is that? But in, in, if you kind of make it like, we're in the middle of doing it and I'm like, oh wait, I gotta tweet this quickly before, you know, I take the pies out. That's like, you feel like there's, there's a face to a corporation and a company. And that, I think, is what he's saying, too. It's like, that's the way they access people, personally, knowing their lives, helping them. I mean, I can tell you a million stories of, you know, what would happen behind the cash and the relationships between the customers and my grandparents. But for us, it's different. For us, like, now that's the way we're, we're going to access them. It's personal through Facebook and Twitter. We asked JP to guide us through the virtual spaces that make up Trey Mari's social media presence. He navigated through their Facebook and Twitter archive, as well as the Trey Mari website blog, all of which he helped design. 
He described to us the people, the pictures, and the moments of interaction with the community that he encounters every day. My goal with Twitter is just to get a vibe as to who's using it, what are we doing, and what's most important to tell them at the time. It's also to see what kind of what people are saying about us. So without just looking at our mentions, I try to see if people have been writing to us or writing about us. Nothing like the Ramadi Bastachini and an espresso to celebrate a birthday. That's really nice. This girl comes in a lot with her nunna. And her nunna used to be really good friends with my grandfather. I remember with the day that she came to pick up all these pastries and she was asking me for help with the world, what she thinks her nunna would like. And I know what she gets every time, so I kind of helped her with that. Even pictures like this, just when I see our workers doing cool things, like taking bread out of the oven or checking it and whatnot, it's really, really nice. It's, I remember this ha happy that girl was just talking about mentioned you should post up pictures of you guys doing different things as you work. So I kind of commented or posted it up saying, you asked for it happy and here it is. Or just an iPad for the store to kind of help get people right then and there and start liking us and offering incentives and whatnot and that's brought it up a little bit more. To visit your friend is a lot more personal than just going to shop for a sale. And that, that's not what I want to gain. I want them to come here because of how my grandparents got them to come here, which is to meet, meet up with one another, to have a coffee with your friends, and that's the relationship they are able to, to grasp just by their own form of social media, just by speaking to their customers, and that word of mouth kind of took off. But for us, I have to gain that through the internet, and it's it was difficult at first, but now it's not so bad. I mean, I sometimes I'll be in the midst of a thread going on talking to somebody, and then we'll kind of end it with, all right, well, I'm here now. Why don't you come by and have a coffee with me? Virtual and physical spaces that make up a place like Chimari don't always perfectly reflect each other. We asked the Deleos to tell us about some of the challenges they have faced forging an online identity within their community. I cannot take the smell of a bakery and put it on social media. And it's like an overcoming feeling of just greatness and freshness. The smell coming in on a cold day, it's, it's unbelievable. You can't take that and put that on, on social media. I mean, Twitter was great, even Instagram was awesome, I mean it picked up a lot faster, but Facebook is really tough, it's tough to get people to really like, click the likes and you know, get, get, our, get, get it up there and Facebook keeps on giving you your, your ins their insights and how you've been doing and it's not helping you this. I know that we're not doing that great and it's, it's a hard site to kind of get out there. I like to see it an ongoing, really, uh, sort of like a system. Just like when, when I wake up in the morning, I open the store, I start baking, I want to be able to have that same system going on my social media. Where you wake up, just like I turn the key in the store, I kind of welcome everybody in the morning, say hello, keep it going really personal, where it's not just ads being thrown out there, it's like a, an on, ongoing communication. We have a, we have a lot of new customers because the area is changing and that's great. But we still have a lot of old customers that are evolving with us and the technology and the website offers that because everybody's online now and, and, and so if, if, if people ask them, we have our cards and they always like pull up the card and they're like, oh you have a website? Because they've been here since like this, you know, the 60s and the 70s and it's like, you know, yeah, it's really different. It's just changed so much, changed us so much. Ursula Franklin, in her Massey lecture, The Real World of Technology, once suggested that we should view technology as a practice, to see the deep cultural link that exists between us and the technology we employ. Doing so, she said, saves us from thinking that technology is the icing on the cake, because technology is part of the cake itself. After JP finished navigating Trey Mari's social network for us, we asked him to take a look at a Corso Italia Tumblr photo blog that had been produced independently of Trey Mari. The experience prompted some insightful commentary on the history of the community, as well as JP's own memories of the neighborhood. In this moment, we witnessed how social media can be more than just fashionable icing. JP was showing us how social media can be a window into the cake itself. This is a really cool shot of Italy, and the, the narrow streets, the cobble steps, and all the stores on the side. It, it's the experience you really get in Italy, that's what we try to recreate, or that's what kind of Corso Italia just built itself on with the constant type of people we have, the type of businesses, the immigration that came there, the influx of Italians. It just sort of adapted to what it, what their life was like back home. Girls Court is where I stop every time. And when I get off the subway, this is the, sh this is the view that I get to see. I get to see Mario's hair design where I, would get my, where I got my first haircut and I still get my haircut there today. Places that have been there for so long 
you can kind of see it all in the shot and it brings back that everyday memory of kind of getting to walk on your street and you know everybody. I mean, on, sometimes I'll, I'll try and walk on both sides just to sort of get to see everybody. The purpose of Chimari's endeavors in social media is to connect with new clientele and strengthen relationships with old customers. But we discovered that by way of focusing on community interaction and celebrating their history, Chimari's social media serves as a valuable resource archive for understanding the Corso Italian neighborhood. As for the DeLeo family, they're most concerned with making sure all their innovations don't lead them away from what made Chimari special in the first place. But you know how they mentioned earlier, you know, you come in and you have that smell of fresh baked bread. I hope we never get away from that. I hope people always really need to come because that's something special that uh, everybody needs to feel. You know, again, I'm going to say like our parents and our grandparents, they had the relationships with the mothers and the fathers. And then they had kids. And now we're here and we understand and we access the kids in a different way. So it's kind of interesting in the way, you know, it's all kind of, it's a generational thing. Like we access, uh, you know, those customers virally or they're, you know, they pay attention to us or like us on Facebook. Um, and, you know, it's just different the way our parents did. But it's all, we all, we're all kind of, I don't know, we're all, we all know each other, we're all part of the same family.